everybody and welcome back. Right, well, it's Monday afternoon, actually it's 10 past 3, uh, but I want to get this week's video started. So, I have two main things to mention before we actually do any work, and they're both uh, related to subscribers and comments. So, as you know, I've never really sort of been a YouTuber. Uh, don't go mad with the equipment or anything like that and I just come in the workshop and take you along with me that's why you see all the mistakes I make but anyway the one great thing that's come out of it over actually it's a few years now is the number of regular viewers that I get comments from and the emails and phone calls I've had the feedback's been very fulfilling and particularly sort of last September when I had my blocked artery incident it was quite something all of the the comments and the well wishes i got so the two things i have to mention as i say are to do with you so the first thing is um bunch of you said you know look after myself so i've been to the doctors this morning and the general consensus is that i don't have an infection i was thinking it was maybe lymph nodes from the way it was but he gave me a prescription for antibiotic just in case actually just in case to take it but the way the symptoms changed from last week over the weekend after I last spoke to you on Saturday this pain in my neck and under my jaw but particularly down here was really bad I very rarely take uh, pain relief medicine but I actually had to take some that's how bad it was so when we went through everything Right from the start, he said, oh, there's two things here. So one, he thinks I had a head cold type minor infection, which gave me the symptoms I thought were sinusitis. But then apparently, and he showed me on his iPad thing, there's a muscle, I can't remember the name of it, which starts right up here and goes all the way down here somewhere. And it's the muscle you use when you sniff, when you go like that. So, and he said he'd actually had this happen to him once. He said, what he thinks has happened is, I've had this minor infection or just simply a head cold, which is why I had the pressure and the headache and all the rest of it. And doing this and this all the time has just strained this muscle. So I say, he gave me some antibiotics and said, if you think you've still got some form of infection to take them, if not just put them on the shelf. Actually, he mentioned that there was that was the antibiotic that he would give me if I was worried about a tick and Lyme's disease and stuff, so they're handy. But basically, um, he thinks the way the sort of head cold symptoms went off and left me with this pain here, that's what he thinks it is, so didn't worry. So the second thing is, as I mentioned, asking for you Greaves people, there are a lot of Greaves people watching, and you were quite wonderful. So, I even took the trouble to make a list. So, let me give, as they call it nowadays, a shout out to Steve Wilcox and Nigel Glover, both of whom took the time and the effort to send me an email, including. There it is, look. Hang on. The Greaves Owner's Handbook, which I printed out. So, thank you very much for that. Then I also had an email from Terry Wakefield who sent me a bunch of, uh, I guess it's scanned them in, pages from Don Morley's book on two strokes. I have his four stroke one, but why would I buy a book on two strokes? I mean, anyway, thank you, Terry. And then I also got an email from Nigel Turner concerning these. I also heard from John Martin, Mike Moore, and I've just got Mr. Lowerson, why I've written that down, I don't know. But they were all comments, again, telling me what to do here. And I also got an email from my friend Charlie Prescott, which I shall read to you because it explains what's going on. He says, morning, Mike. Watch the video and kept shouting at the screen, Mike, leave the bolts in the top and tap them down. The top yoke is on a wedge taper, not unlike a push bike handlebar stem that wedges this. Push bikes. I haven't ridden a push bike since I was a bear. 
Anyway, so he goes on and gives me a little bit more information. But what I'm going to do now is bring you in and explain what all of these comments were about. Right, so you'll remember, you can see it better here, that I thought to myself, wait a minute, there's like some sort of stub bronzed on here which goes down into there. Well, this is correct. And what the stub is apparently is a piece of tube about year long, which is split at the end. And then inside that is, I guess, a conical wedge. Just everybody mentioned a wedge, which when you tighten this, pulls up and opens that tube out and grips this outer tube. So what you're supposed to do, and this of course probably explains why it gets tight after a while, is you unscrew them a bit, then you give them a belt and that loosens the edge and presumably then this comes off. So let's see. Oh! Yep, there it goes. Well, fancy that. Now the next question is, of course, is this so seized on that it will... That one's coming up. coming up but not easily they must be well rusted in there keep hitting this look it's definitely coming out of this side hang on let me walk round I'll walk behind you okay so I think the plan is going to be, if these do come off, we'll completely strip both frames and then we'll look at the engine. God. This one's looser than this one. But it is coming out, look. Let me get some a, a hammer with a bigger head and I'll give this a squirt as well. Alright. Oh yeah, those things are loose. Look at them just and that. And that one. So we'll use something with a bit bigger head, give it a bit more inertia on the blow. These forks are going to fall out, aren't they? I should have them resting on the floor, really. Uh. Uh. Let me put this bike down so the forks are just resting on the floor and I can knock this plate off. Oh, by the way, you remember me telling you it was freezing and snow on Saturday? It's 60 degrees out there and sunny. Hang on, let me go around the front. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, see that. Check that these plates are good when I'm finished. haven't hit them overly hard but as I say they're not very thick this is heading towards falling over let me just put a little block of wood under that bash plate what I should have done really is taken the back wheel out so it was sitting level but I was really intrigued to know 
if this was right. Well, I, was, I knew it would be right. I mean, this is a nice simple idea, but I'm not that sure it's a clever idea. Oh, knew that was going to fall over, but I was ready for it. There you go, look. What is a taper roller bearing? Oh, look at that, they have, they have a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? American would say a cotton pin, it's a split pin, they have a split pin in there, look. So, when I took these bolts out, I've obviously cut through those pins, so let's hope I haven't damaged this, oh yeah, you can see it's a wedge, I'll try and show you this later on. But anyway, they're bronzed. What do you know? Let's go and have a look at the other one. All right, so. Bolt screwed back in and I popped them down. So both wedges have come out. Let us see what a bit of bumping will do. This looks to be about as tight as the other side. Mm, yeah. I think this side is probably more rusted in. Oh, and I've run out of uh, map. Bibbing. So I can't. And that's the amount of oxygen, so I can't even get the oxygen settling out. I'm going to have to have a trip down the town. But anyway, we know how it works. So, I don't really feel like doing much today. I think I'll work on this a little bit. See if I can get this off. And then tomorrow we'll come out and we will... Uh, hang on. Hold your seats. We'll get this. Oh, the back, the subframe doesn't come off. We'll get the swinging arm out and we'll get the bottom plates off. One of the people who wrote to me, uh, I don't know whether I read your name out or not, those were the people. Oh, there's a the thing. You're watching this next Sunday. So, as I say, this is Monday afternoon. I'm sure during the course of the week, I'll get a lot more comments. So let me say thank you very much in advance. All right, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, one of the chaps that sent me some photographs had built a grumpf and he had rebuilt the back end and the bottom loop to take the, the Triumph engine better. So, God, that's really badly pitted. Stay there a minute. I just had a look at the other frame. It's in much better subframe. It's in much better condition than this. So this is the one we'll put the beezer in. Because that one I'm definitely keeping. So it doesn't matter so much. It's a bit it's rusty on the other side, but here it's quite deep pitted. And I don't even want to fill that up with bronze because if I just heat this up, I'm going to put some stresses in this that I don't want. I think it'll be fine. We'll actually use a little bit of filler just to make it look nice. All right, so I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm feeling 
fine this morning the sort of head cold thing seems to have completely gone and uh, I only have a little bit of pain so I've taken a uh, I don't know Tylenol that's what it was I think it was Tylenol whatever so I battered away on this yesterday and it didn't seem to be moving so I thought I need something mechanical I'm wondering if by pulling these bolts out although the uh, the corners drop down whether I've really squished out these tubes so they're a tight fit so anyway we these can't twist or can't twist however they're um, one of the nice things about them unlike a G clamp or a C clamp as they call it here is you can actually if you put them in this way you can force them apart not just pull them in but they'll force apart I've used this before so I had to put a couple of little spacing pieces in let's see if a bit of mechanical force uh, that way will do us any good God, that's not moving at all what do you want to bet this won't go past there no it won't look uh, oh. that's all right okay man these things are in there tight Good, they're not half in there tight. Ah, I think that might have felt as if it was moving a little easier. Sorry, it didn't break, it just jumped out, but it shows you how much bloody pressure's in there. Oh, yes, it did break. Oh, God, these things are expensive as well. <sighs> Look, it snapped off in there. Bugger. I'm not going to break another one. Which way do they go now? That one's moved. This one's moved a bit. Bloody hell. Luckily I got these when they were on sale. Then I'll fix that somehow. Oh, bugger. Hmm. All right, let me uh, work on them a bit more. All right, as you can see, they're just about out. This side has come out reasonably easily. This side, I got a big thick piece of plate and I've been bashing it here. And uh, I don't know if you can see that's really corroded. And of course, a bigger hammer. You can see the uh, the wedge is better there. All right, let me uh, sort this out, and then we'll start taking the bottom part off. Right, so let's see about getting this bottom off and the swinging arm. That's it. Actually, I am um, say 
one of the people I mentioned yesterday had sent me some pages out of Don Morley's book and the pages actually had the sort of changes over the years listed for 67 which is what I'm told these were they went from cable operated brake to the rod operated brake those welded on plates were an optional extra I guess you could have either type I don't know but it just says welded on bash plates you could get them as an option and also even though 67 <clears throat> they went to telescopic forks you could still get the banana forks as an option as well so let's see if these will come out or if we'll have to get the machine on it Ooh. Tell you what, you don't need to see me take the bolts out. There's that one there, that one there, and there's one down here, and then this will come off. And then this isn't a through bolt because there's a, a bolt head on both sides, so that'll come off and that'll come off. Presumably, it's a long one. I, I'm thinking it must be threaded in here, and then. Uh, the swinging arm will come out so let me just take them off so that's got these front bolts out and that one that one actually all the other bolts have been um, British thread patterns so then uh, but this one was just uh, an ordinary half inch spanner not a Whitworth spanner so anyway you can see the way this is this is actually made up there's the two plate the two tubes off it this is all bronzed up I'm pretty sure you know as I say I've seen this on a couple of photographs so that looks very Greaves it's really uh, the weldings well I suppose the weldings alright it's probably all gas welded uh, so I guess we've got to take the bolts out for the swinging arm Let's take the swinging arm off and then this piece will come off the main frame so let me do that all right well there's those bolts taken out there's the threaded pull how the hell hang on I was just gonna say they must be threaded into the swinging arm itself that's this is um, decidedly weird so where is it where's the footrest gone from this oh that's it yeah so that went on to there that goes into here see this is welded to this that is welded to that if that sticks out both sides and this is all welded together how the hell does that come out? Uh, let me give this some more looking at all right still almost got me baffled well no it has got me baffled um, I don't know if this sort of I thought that looked bigger this piece is sticking out than the actual hole in the plate so I got a little piece of tube that went round that because I thought maybe you put if I put the bolt in I could it pulled out or something but that doesn't seem to work uh, I'm wondering if it's a completely through thing but obviously this being threaded I don't want to even with the bolt in I don't want to start banging on that uh, this 
bottom piece is really bashed up it's bent in there and it's bent out here so you know a lot of years of use I just had a quick look I'm talking quickly because the battery's running out but I do have another battery anyway this frame is a TFGS and the other frame is a TFJS was it hang on hang on no TJSF that other one's TJSF and this one is TGS so again I'll be looking it up but if you greasy types know what's what you can tell me so let me keep looking at this I thought I'd get on and strip the other frame so I want to show you this look here's the different way they've supported this footrest look see there's the footrest there the spacing piece going on to this but let me swing you down because there's the other one the other one has a piece here just a piece of bent plate bronzed on the bottom of that to a bracket on the frame strange eh and there's the crossover for the rear brake pedal it's uh, fastened to this piece of the frame that we haven't been able to get off with a it's a sort of u-clamp so once these bolts come out there's two spaces in there this is just going to come out of there and there's the stop to set it so this is just about all stripped there's the uh, the rear brake and then to make sure you can see it it's got a spacing piece on those two u pieces went there and they had uh, spaces in they're even scalloped to go up against the frame this swinging arm's actually still got oil in it for its chain oiler but the other swinging arm is completely free this one is stiff so let's take these two out get the foot rests off and see what this looks like now they came out much easier there's the one from the other frame actually up there with that frame stuff as you can see this one's oil it's even got grease and I noticed with both of them the frame sprung out So I'm still wondering if this is a shaft that goes right through. Let's see what happens here. Seeing as we seem to have oil and grease in this one. Yep, that's coming out the other side. All right. So that's what they do. We've got to make up a thing to extract them. This frame actually as well, the, these bottom plates are straight. So the, this one is definitely going to be the model. Oh, there's another thing. In the pages from Don Morley for 67, he mentioned they went from grey frame to a metallic silvery frame. And I'll tell you what. I will swear blind that this paint on here, particularly you can see it on the bottom of the frame where it's been covered over, is silver hammerite. Remember hammerite in the UK? Came in silver, came in black, came in two shades of green and two shades of blue and a bronze. Light and dark green and light and dark blue and a bronze. And I'll tell you what, I really like those paint and sprayed, they did have a beautiful finish. You can let me see if I can get you up here. I don't know well this is gonna show up. I've turned the light off this side, but I'll swear blind that is hammerite. Probably why the paint lasted so well. It was bloody good paint and a really nice finish. Okay, let me uh, see about getting this swinging arm pivot thing out. Right, well, I left that with some croil soaking down it over uh lunchtime and it came out so 
presumably now, so will the swinging arm. Tell you what, this is all very light. The frame's quite light. The front forks are really light. So now we've got that off. We should be able to get. Oh, I've taken the bolts out of this one. It's the other frame I have. Let me take the uh, bolts holding this thing on and we should be able to take that plate piece off. Right, that's got the bolts out. This one actually still had its engine magic bolts in. Yeah, it seems to be moving off the back. So that is all one piece. Well, there's a space in piece. Look, that's because this, hang on. Mm -hmm. Still can't see it. I'm gonna move you, hold on. Zip. This not only tapers that way, it tapers this way as well. So this is wider than that. So consequently, although actually this, this is cast wider. You'd think they'd cast that to be the same width, but anyway, there was a spacing piece in there. So actually that is the heaviest piece. That's heavier than the rest of the frame put together. And it's only eighth inch. My God, why did they have to do that? Of course, these won't help. They did put holes in them there, look. This thing, I would say, does weigh as much as the rest of that frame. Isn't that silly? I thought that would come up with something easier than that. I mean, if they make this entire piece out of alloy, why don't they put some alloy engine plates on it? Anyway, there's a ton of muck in there. So we'll dig... Oh, actually, there's probably a pound's worth of muck in there. We'll dig that out, get rid of it. Right, so that's... Oh, knock the tapers, the outer bearing race, out of the headstock. We'll put some new bearings in. So there is our first frame and that is the 24TJS. TJS F332. I'm going to write these down and see if I can find out what's what on them. So JS is obviously, what was the other one? GS. This is slightly later model okay let me get the other frame up here see if we can get the swinging arm out of that right well this one is I've got it soaking but this does not budge at all and these bolts by the way are 716 BSF or is it 18 threads per inch so I think what I might have to do with this work on the wheels uh, actually, we could start looking at the engine uh, tomorrow, but can't get this into my press. Wish I didn't have the wall behind the press. And I think the table's all fastened to the wall to keep everything rigid. The worst comes to the worst. I'll take it to my friend Mike, who's got a nice big press there, and uh, 
I'll have to make up something to push it through and something to receive it on the other side. I think the hole is like five eighths. So we have to get it started and then we'll put a five eighth piece in. Push it out. I think that's going to be the only way to get that out. Hmm. All right. Right then we'll have a go at a couple of uh, awkward bolts. I got one suspension unit out the front. Uh, I was able to get this up onto the vise so that when I hit from this side I wasn't pushing this out. That was up against the solid stuff. This one just wouldn't move. So I'm still soaking this and if need be I might have to cut it off. Then there's this nut up here. So that's soaking. It's actually trapped in between two nuts this. So fortunately we've got a nut on the other side. <laughs> that is well rusted on. Right now I need my oxy acetylene. Get that nut good and hot. Uh, Alright, go and have a cup of tea and uh, we'll let this soak a little longer and then we'll see if we can get this one out. Alright, let's have another go at this. Right, so the other side of this is supported, so it's not moving. No, that is not coming out of there. And I don't see how I'm going to get a hacksaw at it. So let's see if I can cut this with a... Cutting disc. Oh, blimey. All right, let's see if we can get this off. See, I was wanting to be careful to not actually cut the um, the thingy itself, the, the bracket. So.
going to have to spring these out a little bit unless I try and drill it. I used to have a hole with a little trigger. I used to pull a little trigger here, and I guess it's like half nut, so you could just slide the vice in and out. Let me go and get a screwdriver thing. Okay. Just uh, get those back to where they should be. They're about. Uh, yeah, they're just fractionally opened out. Not enough to worry about. They'll pull up when we put the uh, the new units in. All right, so. That's that done. All I have to do is get that nut off there somehow. Right, well I haven't solved this problem but I found another one. Look, this is bumped and squished and stuff and it's actually cracked right from there and it's open there. So this swing that side of the swinging arm is completely flat. This side is rounded. Huh. I'm gonna have to do something major there. Well, we'll look into that when we actually get it off. All right, I managed to get the hacksaw in here and saw through there and it's not seized in the bush it's seized in here because there's that I decided I might as well try cutting it out as the uh, swinging arm is so damaged. I've just felt the back, hang on can you see what I'm talking about here just about, I just felt the back of the other swinging arm and the back is perfectly flat like the front is. This one you'll see when I get it out is really, it's really bored out that way. All right let me see about the other side. All right there's the one out the other side. There's the swinging arm out. I definitely can't get a hacksaw in there or I'd have to saw into the tube, which isn't that important. I can always shim it. But, 
heat that up and we might be able to knock that out. I don't know. Anyway, let me show you this swinging arm. So there's the two swinging arms next to each other. One's one way up, one's the other way up to get the same arms together. So you see how that one look is flat, parallel, look at that. Goes all the way out there. That should be, you can see it's sticking out from there to there. So I have no idea what's happened to that. I mean, even if it's been bashed in here, why would it make the other side go out like that? That's as if something has squished it like that. So we'll have to see about a repair on that. Okay, let me go and continue looking at this other bit. All right, I'm doing this bit again because halfway through, I didn't realize but the battery gave out. So what, I'm, what I said was, uh, I'm still working on getting that swinging arm pivot out but I'm not gonna uh, worry about it because that's the frame we're going to use to put the BSA in so we're going to just press on and do the restoration now I've finally managed to get the front wheel out so we're all ready to go with that I'll tell you a bit more in a minute so I thought what I would do to finish the week off is we're gonna weigh some stuff because a couple of things interested me that's only two ounces hang on where does it say zero doesn't say zero anywhere or tear let's let's press tear okay so what we're gonna weigh first is the frame okay now I can't set it up so well because I can't do split screen well, I don't have two cameras but anyway I couldn't set this up so you could see what I was putting on the scales and be able to read the numbers so here's the frame going on so there's the frame look let's just say 15.1 pounds let me write that down and the other thing to try, where is it? Here's the cradle, the one with the welded on bash plates. Six point one five. So that's getting on towards half the weight of the frame. So that would almost be a third of the weight of the frame because that would be 21 and a bit six and a half of it would be would be just the cradle all right so the other thing are forks so let's first of all then let's, they'll put there's one of what would have been I suppose the girl in units so that's weighing 2.11 so there would be two of those so that's 4.22 you write that down then we have the bottom part the bottom loop we'll put that on and we'll put the top yoke on so there we're 5.13 And then lastly, we'll put on the actual banana part. So here that goes. Eight point seven. Right, let me add them up. Arithmetic's not bad. Eight point seven. Right, so that's 12, 16, 16.7, 17 and a half pounds, 17.5. Now just out of interest, I went into the shed and got out, uh, the only forks I had that were sort of complete 
was the C15 ones, those spindly ones. So this is what it would have been on bikes at the time, sort of steel fork sliders and nineteen point let's say nineteen point five. So actually the BSA forks are two pound heavier than those banana forks and I was half thinking I'll take them out and put, put a pair of B40 well B44 forks that I have here uh, so pff, as far as weight goes we'll leave the banana forks in all right so that was a little bit of fun uh, so what else is that say nothing much all right hold on all right so that's gonna be it for this week um, my plan is oh, excuse me itchy nose that next week we'll strip the engine completely get our list of parts get them ordered um, tomorrow morning I'll phone Gary Fletney and order suspension newest front and rear and I'll get online and order the electronic ignition from Electrex World and tomorrow while I'm out I'll take the two seats down to the upholsterer and leave them with him so that means that'll be all stripped next week the week after we'll see about doing the frame maybe getting it painted see what's what I might drill a few holes in that cradle and stuff just to get rid of a, a pound or so and uh, then we'll take it from there we'll get this one done and then we'll uh, obviously we've got extra stuff to do for the one we're going to put the BSA in but I was interested to see those banana forks were so light uh, I really thought they'd be heavy but shoot they're even I mean I don't think forks with alloy legs would be much more than a couple of pounds lighter to be honest so we're really in the ballpark with that that's great and of course um, Gary's units will be all alloy the, the suspension units so there might well be another pound gone there so we're definitely going to use the banana fox because they look good and it's, they work well actually so I'm waffling uh, right so we've got everything stripped this week we're going to strip the engine next week we're going to look at rebuilding the rolling chassis the week after oh I think the pair of wheels out of that bike have got good rims probably good spokes the full width alloy rear hub on the back wheel is nice and clean I, I think I just clean that wheel up that will be nice the front one with the single sided drum I'll uh, strip that wheel might just rebuild it with the original forks and what have you, uh, the, forks, the original spokes but I want to paint the drum because it looks a bit naff so there's a plan for the next two or three weeks and uh, we'll just go along as uh, we're able to so in the meantime you all stay safe and enjoy yourselves <laughs>